See ya. Love ya. Honey, I homeschooled the kids by Nadia Swahala and Mark Adley. This is a book review. I wanted to do a quick book review. Um, I'm sat right back here so hopefully you can see it. If I keep looking down, it's my notes, so I wanted to do this properly. It's Honey, I homeschooled the kids. Our personal, practical and imperfect guide by Nadia Swahala and Mark Adderley. Um, it's only just come out. It came out on the 3rd of September. It's now the 6th of September. It took me two days to read because it's a nice, easy read. I'll start off by saying I'm trying not to be biased because I'm a huge Nadia Swahala fan. But it's easy to think, you know, oh, they only got this book deal because they're famous. But, you know, famous people have a lot of clout. My mother-in-law was against us homeschooling uh, for a few years. And then one day we went round and she went, Oh, that woman, Nadia Swahala off Loose Women, is homeschooling. And because suddenly, because a famous person was doing it, a famous person she liked, it was okay. And also, because they're famous, it's more mainstream, isn't it? It'll reach more people and help more people. Now, um... The introduction, they could have trimmed it a bit, it goes on a bit and they repeat themselves like I think they say they're anti-school twice and they mention co the Covid, you know the Covid situation, the school shut in two or three times and that did put me off a bit, I thought oh, they've just thrown it together for Covid thing, get it out as quick as they can. But don't let the introduction put you off, introductions are hard to write, the rest of the book is fantastic. Um, they talk about their school experiences, which I thought was interesting because apart from the fact it gave me a bit of insight to Nadia Swahara and I'm a fan, um, it just shows you how schools have changed. Uh, the dad, Mark, was saying how he nearly went off the rails but it was only because the teachers were allowed to break the rules so much more in the 70s and 80s um, in a way that they're not allowed to now. It's all about results and league tables and getting grades now. But the way the teachers were allowed that freedom then helped him learn and he become very successful academically. And it was also interesting that they said that the way the way that you were taught um, has an impact on how you homeschool your kids. And I thought it was quite interesting. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to burp. They said the cracks only started, they sent both the kids to a private school. The cracks only started when their youngest started nursery. She was a summer baby, so she was a whole year a year, but year younger than all the other kids in the class. And she looked so young and not ready for it. And Nadia Swahala says one of her regrets is not listening to her instincts. You know, and not just taking her home, dropping her off there every single day crying. And I relate to that because that one of my major regrets is dropping my oldest off at nursery and him screaming and the nursery nurse holding him physically back. And they're saying to me, just go, just go. And I did. See, it upsets me just talking about it. So I really related to that. And then when she, when their youngest started, their second child, when their youngest started primary school, she was struggling because she was dyslexic and all the horrible, you know, the anxiety and the worry and the stress at such a young age made me so glad that we did take Pudge out before he started proper school because we think he is dyslexic and it would have been the same for him. And my heart just went out to him about that. Um, where are we? Oh, and then they talk about other people's objections when they first started to do it. And when you've got to de-school your child, you end up de-schooling yourself because you don't realise how programmed you are into thinking that school is the only way kids can learn. Um, the book's told from both Nadia and Mark's perspectives. Like, she'll write a little bit and he'll write a little bit. And you get you get the feel for both of them. And she she's more go with the flow. He's... He found it a lot harder to let go of mainstream education and he found it a lot harder to de-school himself. And I think that's nice because not only does it show how they balance each other out as a couple, they're probably the, you know, the perfect team. It just shows you how, from two different perspectives, how two different people come to homeschooling and, and how much you change from the beginning to the end, especially if you was more worried about it at the beginning. Um, where are we? Sorry, I've got my notes, I'm going to do it properly. 
when she's talking about the early days of de-schooling their youngest child, she said, the joy of homeschooling is that you get to spend that precious time with your children previously allotted to, for teachers. And I just, I really love that quote because all this time you're giving teachers with your children, you know, that time you'll never get back their childhood. They spend a lot of the time with the teacher and not with you, don't they? I just really like that quote. And then their oldest child, the cracks only started to show when she was in year six, you know, the last year of junior school when they're like 10 or 11 and the test pressure was too much. And then they had bullying problems. So they ended up taking their oldest out as well. But then, because she was took out older, um, they go into GCSEs, worrying about exams, uh, whether you should do it or not, different ways of approaching that or not. And they also say that you're not a teacher. You can just, you're not teaching them, you're facilitating their learning. It's okay not to know things. It's okay to learn things with them. Oh, they talked about different types of homeschooling. I don't think they mentioned every single type, which I'm not blaming them for, because there's that many. But the only thing I did think was, um, they were talking about radical unschooling, and they said that the film Captain Fantastic is radical unschooling. The film Captain Fantastic is not radical unschooling. That father had an agenda, and there's a scene in the film where he's talking to the one of the older daughters about a book she's reading, and he says, "I didn't assign you that book," and she says, I've, "I skipped ahead," and then he's quizzing her on the book. That's not radical unschooling. If you want to know about radical unschooling, look up Dana Martin or Lou Elastic and the Hippie Shake. That's radical unschooling. But anyway, that's that's just a minor blip in it. That's just that's just my opinion. Some people might think Captain Fantastic is radical unschooling but they, while they was talking about different homeschooling they was on about don't get hung up on labels and i do agree with that don't get hung up on labels it doesn't matter just pe cherry pick the things you like cater for your child you don't have to stick to a certain type or a regimen oh and then they discuss all you know the usual homeschool topics socialization how to teach how they teach their children how they deal with opposition nadia was saying that she gets invited on telly shows and they want to discuss homeschooling with her but she feels like they want short answers off her so that they can instantly dismiss the answers or or they, they just want to argue with her about why she's wrong rather than have a proper discussion about it. And I can relate to that. That's, that's how it is. Isn't it? A lot of the time they don't want to hear why it's working for you. They just want to tell you why you're wrong. Um, and they're on about how homeschooling allows you to be more flexible with your time. You know, you don't have to do eight or three every day you can fit it in whenever especially if you're both working parents like they are um it's a really good book if you are an established homeschooler it's not going to teach you anything new but you will read it and be like nodding going yeah 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 that's true yeah yeah that's true yeah mm, that's true mm, mm, that's true yeah mm. and if you are new to homeschooling it'll it'll comfort you and give you and show you that another family did it another family especially a family that was middle class and quite conventional still came to that decision it was the best thing for them and it was the best thing for them um i thought it was interesting because homeschoolers are all very different and even though a lot of it i could relate to and a lot of it was you know my belief system they still are very different from us we have a huge emphasis on gardening nature life skills history literature their emphasis seems to be uh cooking literature art film storytelling um so it's just it's, it's gonna live in my bookshelf forever it just shows you that they are a different kind of homeschool family to me but we do meet on so many beliefs um i'd give it nine out of ten uh if you're thinking of buying it a wood this is hardback i don't know if it'll be cheaper when it's in paperback um and i still love nadia so hard. i love her so yeah, it's 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 very personal. It's about them and their journey, but with some some advice thrown in. It's not a step by step guide or anything like that. But it'll be comforting and relatable. And um, what's the word? Valuable. If you're thinking of homeschooling or you are homeschooling. So that's Honey I homeschooled the kids. Our personal, practical and imperfect guide, Nadia Sulhala and Mark Adley. I'll just bring it closer in case you can't see it. Da -da -da -da. And let's flip the camera around. There it is, look, but like I say, this is the hardback. Da -da. 
See you next time, brand new video. Bye bye.